Oh, oh. <laughs> hey yo. Uh, Monty Simo. Monty Simo. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Anyways, guys, we're joining you from Solo Key Musky Legends. Cristo. I like it actually. Uh huh. Yeah. Musky uh, Cristo. Musky Cristo. Or Monty Bed. Monty Bed. Monty Bed. <laughs> we're joining you guys from Solo Key Legends number two, and uh, we are live right downtown Toronto, bringing you guys the best of the best in Solo Key Legends action. Uh, this is the second tournament we've done here at George Brown, and this one is sponsored by Red Mercy. He's put $1,500 up for grabs for this tournament, and uh, it's underway, and it's been going crazy so far. We see a lot of really good teams, tons of very high-level players here, and uh, we are jumping into the next round of Champion Select. We've got Team Quetzal versus Team Shoebill, but I'm probably just going to call them Team Melee versus Team Venom Paw. Now... On this blue team is actually a former teammate of mine who has won one of these solo queue tournaments before, as well as Melise, who is a well-known AD carry in the Toronto scene. She's very, very strong uh, mechanically, plays a lot of different AD champions, and uh, these guys are definitely another contender for the finals. Is that permanent love? Is it really? Is that who I think it is? Tell me a little bit about permanent love. Permanent love, if I'm not mistaken... Um, he was there when I got first exposed into esports. I think he was at the AMD Radeon, that little tournament there. He is, I think, does he play mid lane or top? I know that he doesn't play jungle ADC or support, but I, I think he's, he's definitely a solo laner. He is exceptional when it comes to, you know, keeping the pressure on, keeping the Bunsen burner on in the kitchen, making sure that his chicken is nicely fried. And he's going to be frying some blue team boys today. He you know, he's is good. a spicy player. A spicy player, to say the least. And I'm, like you, you got to keep an eye out, probably on permanent love for the purple team and Melis for the blue team to kind of be the playmakers, be those stars in the sky that we got to bring down to earth and play some League of Legends. What let's talk about the picks on. Yeah, what yeah. is going yeah. on? Yeah, what's here, going dude? on here? What's We've going got on here, boys? A Karthus locked in, potentially a top lane Karthus, potentially a jungle Karthus. Who knows? It is the Solo Key Tournament. People do whatever the hell they feel like. As long as they've got good teamwork, and as long as they, you know, play a comp together that is executed well, yeah. pretty much any team can play whatever they like. It's not LCS here, guys. We don't need the best of the best champions. If you've got a comfort pick and you can execute it correctly, boy, can you do some damage. We've seen that in the past with Shaco, Nautilus before he was strong. Uh, you know what I mean? Just random champions like that. You can completely crush this tournament on your sleeper picks, your uh, your go-to kind of destroy Silicon Valley picks. So, pretty excited to see this card. This. Let's take a look at the pick and bans. We are a little bit late to the party. Um, LeBlanc, Irelia, Hecarim, Jinx, and Nivea Sejuani. Fairly standard. Really surprised to see a Nivea being banned out just consistently. But I'm guessing we've got a lot of Nivea players today. We've got yeah, the Egg God. So. We got a J Jukester. Yeah, we got you know we got quite a bit of Nivea players here coming out to Toronto. I'm guessing because they like the cold. You know they got to keep yeah keep sense. frosty with yeah. the Nivea. A little you know? team spirit Nivea, something like it's that. It's a little hot outside. You it know? is. Yeah, got to cool off. Well, I mean, we're keeping it cool. Let's yeah, be real. Keeping it cool. Um, Dirty Lungs picking up that Scion. I like it. Very, very strong champion in the current meta. Take a TP smite on him, and uh, you're going to be easily pushing 3 to 4k health at about 25 minutes into the game. Let me challenge your, your commentary. Please do. What are the top three smite teleport champions right now in the meta? Shivana, Hecarim. Mundo? Mm, I wouldn't oh. even say Mundo. That's a tough one. It's a tough one, yeah. It's a good question, because like, that's right now kind of like what everyone's going, right? Like, you could even see Nocturne Smite teleport if it's really like you know that great. But I would actually say it would be Trundle. Trundle, yeah. That, that works. That definitely uh, does Trundle work. hasn't been played very often, but I think he's very, very, very sleeper right now. And uh, is a he kills tanks? Come yeah. on, like well, He's like very it's obvious. It's he was obvious. also buffed in the last patch as well. So yeah. some other things that I would like to see top lane with that would be Shen. Yeah. Uh, we don't ever see any Shivana either, yeah. Uh, yeah. and even Olaf potentially. Yeah, man. Um, Oh, I don't know why Olaf hasn't been popping up a little bit here and there. You know, he's very Void Boy inspired. He does he does wonders if you play him right, and a lot of people don't play him right, and I think that's why people stay away from Olaf. But once you get a good Olaf player, you're going to be making some things happen. Speaking of terrifying picks in solo queue, <laughs> we've got Annie, man. Oh my! I freaking hate Annie, dude. It doesn't matter if you are. 
jumping on her in lane, she'll still, you know, start roaming and get, like, five or six kills just randomly in the jungle or whatever. I hate that champion. Yeah. Damn. Damn, Damn indeed. Damn. I am like, can we move on to our next game, guys? I don't even want to cast this. I would much prefer Oh, my God. Again. Yeah. Um... But let's take a look at this team comp here. We've got, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's let's analyze this. Let's analyze this. Which composition do you think uh, has got the strength here? It looks like we're going to see a top lane Karthus. Oh, Nocturne also very good with the Smite TP. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, th I think I mentioned that earlier. We've got a purple team, uh, I believe, kind of with a more pick focused comp. They've got Nocturne to go balls deep out of nowhere, you know, from left wing. Lots of uh, Thresh. Pressure. You know, welcome to Hook City. The Zed coming in to kind of clean up. You know, so many strong Zed players at this tournament. Um, Graves, standard. Like, what else do I need to say about Graves? Yeah. It's, just, it's just Graves. Yeah. Karthus, I really don't know where this guy's Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. He doesn't have teleport either. Yeah. Uh, definitely unique. I mean, it's not a bad idea considering he's not really going to get pushed out of lane. If he starts flash, he'll be fine. He gets a tier, gets a catalyst, have the sustain. And, you know, Cyan's not going to, like, dump on him in lane. It's, it's just going to push against him really hard. And uh, he's going to scale up equally with the Scion. Uh, yeah, the thing is, he's not going to do a lot of damage against two Cinder Hulks. Yeah. Actually, sorry, Captain Caps Lock isn't going for the Cinder Hulk. My, my apologies. Yeah, if he, he has doesn't have smite, a smite, he, would... he could still go Sunfire, but that's terrible. That's like, like, it's a horrible idea. Yeah. Um, let's talk about blue team a little bit. We touched upon purple team. Kind of confused us to work. What Karthus is going to do, how impactful he will be. Because it takes a while for Karthus to ramp up and really have great alts. And really kind of like walk into the fight and do a great job. You know, He's he got to... lots of zone control. Yeah, yeah. No, that, 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 is, that does hold true, but he does really need to get a few kills with his yeah. ultimate to kind of get If he gets kind of like flash in, he ulted, or even Jen ulted out of the fight, it yeah. could be uh, a lot less effective than he's mm -hmm. probably counting on. Uh, especially actually because he doesn't have exhaust. Mm -hmm. And exhaust is something usually, as a Karthus, you want to play uh, one of two ways. You want to play either the zone control way, and just kind of like protect your AD carry, yeah. or you want to have exhaust and you want to flash in uh, and then kind of remove somebody to the fight for a little bit with your exhaust and then kill them with like the suicide Karthus style. Yeah. Um, so we'll have to see. Looks like the blue team just kind of has my voice just got really high there. That was crazy. Hey, yo, welcome back to high school. Looks like the uh, <laughs> looks like the blue team's going for a lot more of just like a, a standard team fight composition. You know what I mean? They've got a lot of control, a lot of uh, safety, disengage, engage, everything like that. Just a very standard composition, and I like to see that. Um, what I'm really interested in is. I've never seen this in my entire life, but I want to see this mechanic. I want to see Melly's alt sensual place into the fight, and then Janna ult, and then push one dude back and separate the rest. I just want to see like some yeah. like super Gragas like effect. Like I don't know, I, like that would. Oh my god, that would that, that would make my day. I'm but, a little uh, bit worried about. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of damage on this purple team, but they don't have a lot of frontline focus like in terms of or sorry like a, a frontline effect so a tank in a what i think is going to happen in this game is venom is going to go very tanky he's going to go probably skipping the tier probably going to go rod of ages pick up a rylize at least i think that's what he should do and then nocturne is going to go for a little bit of that bruisery thing he's not really going to be a tank but 100 percent they're going to be able to kill him at least they have three targeted abilities. They've got the Zed ultimate, they've got uh, Nocturne ultimate, and they've got Karthus ultimate. So they'll be able to take him out of the fight completely. And not to mention you've got the AoE from Graves. Isn't the best against Kalista, but generally he'll be able to hit her with uh, you know, his ultimate, do a lot of damage. But after that, I'm a little bit worried. I feel like the tanks are pretty much just going to walk over the rest of the team fight. you know what I mean, from the blue side. It, it, it's really up to Janna and Annie to create a huge presence um, in order to peel for Melis, because she is going to be the star player of this match. She is going to be mm -hmm. the one that has gonna be, that's going to have to really show up and really show like the fans what they want, show them that she can carry this team to victory. She can lead this team, a team that she has been put together with, and that she can take them and you know use them... To her best ability in that sense she's gonna need a lot of peel from her entire team she has that support system there in place they just need to execute it and it's gonna be the Janna alt is gonna be the any alt to kind of really keep their entire team at bay so that like you know Zed is gonna be afraid to go in uh, Nocturne is gonna be afraid to go in and it's 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 I guess in a sense it's really up to the pressure and the tension that Melis' team has to offer in the in, ter in terms of disengage and re-engage. You know what I think would be amazing in this composition instead of the Janna? 
a bard. <laughs> just drop the ultimate down, because I was like, I feel like this Calista needs a Zonia's or something like that, you know what I mean? Probably an early Banshee's Veil, with, with, uh, like with, say, ch with, with uh, challenging smite. Bard with a challenging smite. <laughs> Not necessarily. But the true attacks are very strong on the bar to challenging smite. Once he gets scaled up, you know, it's not terrible. <laughs> gets Those meeps times. meeping so hard. But uh, yeah, I mean, my lease is probably gonna need to go for like Hurricane Bloodthirster Quicksilver Sash. Yeah. And if they're strong, she can live through it. If she isn't gonna get those items, and she goes for like more life or something like that. It's going to be a very, very tricky situation. We are jumping into the game. Seems like we have a pretty standard level 1, 3 egg god. Hasn't even stacked up his W, so I assume it's going to be pretty tame overall level 1. Fairly standard starts. I really wanted to see some invades. I always want to see invades at solo queue tournaments, but it never happens. My wishes never, yeah. my wishes never come true. I guess people just want to play it safe, see how their opponent plays, because they're not used to playing against their opponent, right? They don't want to play anything risky. They don't want to risk losing that $1,500 Red Mercy. Um, they don't want to risk that, that Guala, the Benjamin Franklins. They really want to keep it together. and um, Sometimes you just got to cheese it. Yeah, and, and and that that tilts people. That tilts people like crazy, um, and like even a star player like Permanent Love, it could tilt him. He could like be like throwing out random ults onto Rek'Sai and like focusing tanks for no reason. But uh, Permanent Love, man, if he starts winning this lane, it's, it's going to be very, <laughs> very, very bad for the blue team because yeah. they have such a good pick comp. They can set up plays everywhere on the map, and if they can get, you know, like the Zed really far ahead, he'll be able to duel anybody on that team, including the Scion, including the Rek'Sai, no problem at all. So, uh, I mean, if there's a star player on this team, it is permanent love. You're gonna, definitely going to have to keep an eye on the mid lane, because Annie is a really, like, you know, intense matchup. I, like, of course, Zed could make wonders during level 6, he could dodge alts, he could do whatever he needs to do, but if this Andy needs to go a little bit more aggressive to kind of punish, like, you know, permanent elf for being able to see, yes, like, it's a range versus a melee matchup, like, Andy should be kind of pressuring that. Yeah, way. Andy, I mean, she is pretty tanky too, you know, gets yeah. the shield, like, could probably build towards either a, a Rod of Ages or something like that. Look at that, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, how do you deal with a very, very good laner, no matter what champion <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're playing? Yeah, that's true. So Ooh. both two players, oh wow, big, uh, just letting him know that he can hit those, those hooks, obviously. God damn. This bottom lane Sending getting those hooks. really aggressive. Level 2 trading, uh, just trying to emphasize how strong these guys are in the lane. Like we said, melee is going to be the primary carry for this blue squad here. Resh, sending those hooks into a sensual place, um, keeping it really... Oh. Looks oh. like we see a little bit of attention towards the mid lane. Rek'Sai, uh, I can't tell if he's going for the Scuttle Crab. Most likely not, since he's hanging around there. But just going to drop a little tunnel and head off towards his top side of the map. That actually does show where he has oh, started. Oh, baby. Yeah, oh my god, the Flash coming down on a 3 Egg God. Gets the Ignite, gets oh! the first blood, though, and will not live. Actually, didn't have any potions to heal himself up through that Ignite. But at the end of the day, the experience is going over to the Annie and not to the Zed, which is a big, big deal. That was such an intense fight. Um, I, I, I didn't really expect uh, Annie to really come out of that alive, but she played that very well. She got the first blood. And at the end of the day, that's that's a worth trade. Both summoners burned on both players, but it's going to be up to Annie to kind of like really make something out of it. Um, I, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about Karthus versus Scion. How's that coming along? Like We, didn't, we never really talked about it that much. That's... Sion's getting pushed in. What the hell is going on? Venom Paw building Frost Queen's claim. I can't even theorize that. I can't even think of a good reason because you're like ki killing a minion disables the passive. It's not. It's not effective. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything effective in lane. If he can call me, my number is. You know, it'll, sh it'll flash on the screen. Call me. Text me. Let me know how does that work and how is that an effective item? Please, I would love to know that. It like what? Yo. Uh oh, we might see a little bit of training in the bottom lane. Ren's doing a lot of damage, mainly, and he really just, you know, pressuring the hell out of this bottom lane. 
Oh my god, actually the hook going on to the Janna. Ooh. She's getting chunked out really hard. Not exactly what they wanted to have happen. Uh, obviously just trying to get those W procs off so she can get a little bit extra damage from Melee's, but it was a lot of effective health lost in that bottom lane. Junglers kind of still mirroring each other. Nobody finding any ganks yet. Uh, you know, Rek'Sai is kind of the more aggressive jungler early on in the game. While both teams are kind of neck and neck in terms of kill. Woo, fancy footwork and fresh, but the hook does dodge. Yeah, Melius gets exhausted. That's a big deal against the Kalista. Oh my god, actually, he walks back into the Ren. She was able to save it after the exhaust ran off, popping it. Uh-oh, here comes Print24, though, in from behind. Oh my god, this is huge. Good to get the kill onto any of them. The flash coming out from Janna. Will Melis be able to live? She flashes as well. Uh, Rek'Sai is here as well. Oh my god, Print44 going underneath the jungle, only gets one kill, and that will be a double bust actually being passed over to Dirty Lungs as well. Thank god he was there. That could have been so much Worse, where was the rest of the bottom lane there on that gank? Let's take a look at that replay once more, just to kind of see what happened and break down everything that had occurred in that uh, in that play. Oh man, they actually picked up a kill. We'll check that one out later. But here is the initial dive. So uh, both flashes are burned, so Nocturne has kind of has to go in there. But Graves and Thresh are off to the side, and they're really not providing any assistance to the Nocturne. He was coming down to help them out, but. Uh, we're going to keep looking at this replay if we can. Uh, there was another kill that went down in the bottom lane here. We'll take a look at what happened to this Janna. I think she just gets a little bit cocky here. There it comes. Oh! Flash Buckshot. You know, I, I think that a lot of people in the in the solo queue tourney... Um, whoa, Scion dying to Karthus. That's quite the interesting Yeah, beat. I think that was another dive actually being a little bit... You know, these guys are a little bit... <laughs> a little bit thirsty today. You know, yeah. that Red Bull keeping them quenched. One thing that I wanted to mention is that I think that a lot of people in this tournament... Um, at least, I only think Diamonds and Challengers can really do this. Maybe like High Plats... Like, Graves flashed, and then he queued, but some people need to um, uh, queue, but then... Like, you know how people, like, set up a... They queue, and then they flash, but he flashed, and then he queued, so it's kind of like... Um, he, gotta, he has to set up his spells in that regard. We're gonna see... Level 6 is starting to happen around the board. 3 I God. Ooh, gotta be careful blowing your stun like that, buddy. Bochunger is playing around the mid lane, a very explosive... 2v2 around there. Lots of gap closers, lots of burst damage, and this is going to be the initial fight. Dirty Lungs is level 6 against the Nocturne. However, he did just hit it off the minion, so he's got level 6 now. Might try and pick a fight with him in the jungle. There's low health targets all the way across the map. This is going to be a very exciting next couple of minutes. Looks like uh, they kind of feel that he's around that red. They're going to see the Tremor Sense a little bit. 3A God going to hang out underneath his tower. Print 24. Has his ultimate. Should be able to check that Rek'Sai. Does he have smite? Dirty Lungs gets the smite, gets the health back. Beer going onto him. He's fighting on the Nocturne's Q as well. Is he going to ultimate? No, he's not. He knows that there's going to be a lot of follow-up. Three Egg God in trouble. Does get popped by the Zed. He will get out as well. Ignite not going to take him down. Dirty Lungs still uh, in that back line here. Print 24 is the one in trouble, though. If he's not careful, that could happen. He gets engaged on by the Nocturne. He's got the Q down onto him. Gets the move speed. There's the Karta's ultimate. Is going to take out Dirty Lungs. Now what's going to happen to Print 24? He's all alone. That is going to be a kill going over to him. Unfortunately, that bottom lane is not there. No Lantern available for Print 24. And that's another kill going over to Mei Lee's in the bottom lane. So, all in all, a two-for-one trade? Or is that a one? Yeah, two-for-one trade. Uh-oh, Central in trouble! Cheesy play is coming up from Glee Solar and X Tempest. Mei Lee's gets exhausted once again. Oh, and, uh, you know, that's going to be a double kill for the Graves. 3 and 0 oh now. Lots of cheesy kills over... Man, oh my god, look at the damage coming up from Captain Cops. Jesus. This has been a very, very high pressure matchup so far. Lots of pressure from the jungle and Nocturne trying to get into Rek'Sai's jungle, see if he can make some plays there. And he did, like Graves was able to cut off the bot, uh, the bot lane as he was trying to escape while they were returning back to lane. Um, Zed creating a lot of pressure, killing that Annie. Um, just overall, red team has been in the right place at the right time and blue team has had a hard time kind of catching up. Or maybe they're just not tanky enough yet, maybe they just don't have the correct... Um, situation to be in like their win like in terms of fighting their win conditions haven't been always the best um as far as like let's say for janna maybe her shield's not strong enough to kind of sustain some of these fights and maybe if balling had rotated a lot earlier like you know some people would have been safe but in general red team has been at the right place at the right time and 
What I'm looking at next is Dragon. Dragon is definitely the next like objective that everybody has to kind of look at. Laning phase is almost over, um, and everybody has their ultimates. Like mid game's gonna come, yeah. come around the corner soon. Yeah, and you know that is the strength of this blue side team, right? They kind of do want to fight as five. They need that front line. They need to be able to protect somebody on their team, be it three egg god or melees. They need to be able to back them up. Unfortunately, the one being targeted right now is Dirty Lungs. You can see just the pick potential coming out from. Print 24, Permanent Love, and of course, Venompaw helping out. He's picked himself up two kills, one from that Scion and run from that Rek'Sai hanging out on the top lane. So good job by him picking up enough CS to uh, really just be a strong Karthus. And there's been zero attempts at ganking that top lane from the Rek'Sai. Kind of similar to what's been going on with that Cassiopeia. Nobody really seems to be punishing those mages in the top lanes for some reason. Definitely, and I... You know, I guess Karthus made it work. You know, I thought, like, you know, maybe if he wanted mana sustain, he could have went Crystalline Flask, or he could have went, like, two Fairy Charms and some Mana Regen Glyphs in his rune page. But, you know, he made it work, and now I think he's on his way to a Rylize, trying to slow down the enemies with his, yep. like, his abilities. And, you know, that would be great for catching potential. Yep. Nocturne could catch up, Dezette could catch up, Graves could keep up. You know, it creates great pick potential as soon yeah. as they start team fighting, at even the though they're not a team fight comp. Yeah, at the same time, he also has a lot of protection. Uh, from, you know, he's able to create that zone and protect his graves. Mei Li's getting hooked once again. There's the box. There's the ultimate. Big Jan ultimate, though. Able to keep up the health. However, here is the Karthus ult. Not enough. I don't think Central Palace might go down if some flashes are blown. But uh, with all those ultimates down, it's hard to say. Uh-oh, Sign going in. Gets the knockup. Hits the ultimate onto Venompaw. He has used his ultimate. He has his flash if he can get away, but... Looks like he wants to fight it. Every ability used by Captain <laughs> Caps Lock here is where the Karthus starts to uh, have damage, but he needs to hit his abilities, obviously. Sometimes that will be the I first tower of the game going down to the bottom lane. Sometimes I feel like Karthus' Qs is like whack-a-mole. Doesn't it feel, doesn't it kind of sound like whack-a-mole? Yeah. Like he's kind of like hitting, like sometimes he's hitting at nothing, sometimes he's hitting at everything. I don't know, it's just... I, I, I would love to see a Circus Karthus. I think that would be a great skin. I don't know how it would work. Maybe his, his uh, what's that, his his W could have like a merry-go-round. I don't know, I don't know, these are... Right, hook, right. Call me up. Can maybe talk about some Hit me scary. up, right? Hit me Hit up, me right? Up. We can talk. <laughs> Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Um, in terms of in terms of pressure, obviously red team's got it going in the bag right now. Nocturne doesn't even need to really create a lot of pressure. The laners are good good enough on their own. Zed has created such a pressure on Annie. She's sitting by her turret all the time. Scion and Karthus are constantly fighting, but does Scion have a lead on Karthus? No. The bot lane is always consistently fighting, and they're always out damaging um, Janna and Kalista. You know, for for blue team to kind of make it back, they gotta, like you said, they gotta get those five v fives. They gotta contest Dragon, but to do that, they need to create some pressure somewhere, and that might be up to Scion. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know where that needs to be. Let me uh, let me break it down real quick. Karthus doesn't have TP. Karthus is easy to gank. And you have Rek'Sai, who's a strong early ganker. You also have a Scion, who's a strong early ganker. Uh-oh, here we go. I'll catch up on that later. Here comes maybe that Janna ultimate you're talking about. Nope, a Mist Tornado instead. And that's going to be uh, pretty much left alone. And most likely a counter gank actually coming from the Nocturne. These guys are very overextended. Karthus doesn't have his ultimate, though. Will they try and find something here? Get the hook, Extemporis. It's all on you. Looks like they will just back out. But the thing is, without Karthus having an ultimate, you can put up pressure top, you can get Scion rolling, and it doesn't matter what happens. You get the Scion going, and then you start putting attention towards the bottom lane. You outscale in terms of a 5v5 team comp. If you're trying to fight little fights like these, you're going to lose because there's a Zed, there's a Hook, there's, you know, the long engage from Nocturne. You're going to get picked out. Karthus out as well. What's Scion going to do in Teleport? It, it, it's just... You... The early Have game to, has been played wrong a little bit, yeah. A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it, it's just the jungler, his pathing and, you know, a little bit of decision-making in terms of where he should be putting pressure and warding and everything like that just weren't quite there for the way that his team comp wants to be. They're definitely still in the game, but... It's very hard to come back against a pick composition, especially when you have a carry like Karthus in the top lane. See, Flash immediately burned by Venompaw. That is exactly what you're talking about. Here is an easy kill for them. Venompaw going down. I think, uh... I was about to say, Dirty Lungs has got to get his lungs checked out so he can gank more efficiently, but I think he's got it. He's definitely got it in the bag. He did the right thing, like you said. He got that Karthus. Yeah, and you know that's... And then, but, yeah. but then that's pressure It's, it's a little bit line. too yeah. little too late. Uh, great adaptation by the red team. Picking up that dragon. 
knowing that so much was blown blown at the top lane as well. I mean, that kill was on a, a Rylai's Karthus, who already has two kills. A little bit too late. Oh my god, here we go. Permanent love gets the oh kill and dodges my. the Tibbers. My lord, is there going to be a Karthus ultimate in two seconds? Will he be able to pick up the Annie? Is he going to use it? Yes, he is. Boom. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Let's take a look at that replay. Almost there's really... a kill up top as well. Let's take a look at that replay. Um, I really want to see that Zed pop that Annie once again. Let's take a look at that. He's got the positioning right. He dodges the Tibbers and finishes off with a Shuriken. It's almost enough for Graves to pick up that kill. And then uh, Karthus obviously does all to clean it up. Wow. Fancy I mean, footwork from Red Team so far. Once you give a high diamond player like that the lead and you've got enough support to help him do what he wants to do, plays like that can be made. And now you've got three very, very strong carries with three kills apiece. And, you know, like a 5,000 gold lead at 15 minutes. It's, it's a hard, hard place for you guys to come back to. Absolutely. And I remember um, when I was climbing up the ladder as a support... It's really hard to come back if your team is behind as well. Like, let's say you get behind as a support, but your team's also behind. It creates a lot of a lot of tension on your entire team because um, if there's one player behind, and then if there's two players behind, it just it's terrible because then that means that like your entire team is struggling to kind of find a find a pick, find some potential, find some opportunity to make it back in this game. And at this point. Like you said, it's a little, t a little, a little too late for blue team. Um, a lot of the opportunities that they had, they missed out on. And now, well, it looks like we're finding a new opportunity. The bottling looks like they found something. Exhaust going on to Graves. Here comes the lantern. A little bit too late for Thresh. They're gonna get the kill. Arctic Karthus again. Maybe this is exactly what they need to kind of create some pressure. But Venom Paw, welcome to Kite City. Having to, I, th I think, uh, Siren flashed out of there. Ultimate coming from Nocturne plays all over the map. And he getting picked up by the Zed. Wow. Wow, indeed. This is going to be an easy tower for them. Rexai is not going to be able to get there and will not be able to defend either way. Going to have to go the long way around. That's an easy, easy tower for them. They're going to lose one in the bottom lane potentially, but they could even pick up another here. They've got so many minions. Permanent Love and Nocturne shred this tower. Dirty Lone is getting engaged onto. Beer isn't going to land. Permanent Love needs to alt back. Will do so. Will they get the tower here? There's a decent amount of uh, distraction, but X Tempers <laughs> forced the flash out there. Nobody able to lantern him out. <laughs> oh man. Melee's gonna back out in the bottom. Next dragon coming up pretty soon. Gonna be most likely in the advantage of the red team. They've got complete control of that side of the map right now. Uh, only thing is, Karthus is stuck at top lane. No TP. I don't think I've ever seen him leave the lane. <laughs> Right? Am, yeah. I, am I right? I think he's it's been true. there the entire... His mobility is terrible. Do you think he's going to travel? Hell no. I'm staying in my split push lane. Any, nobody can 2v1 me. I'm the king. I'm Karthus. You know, my daughter's on the enemy team. I got a record, bro. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, he's creating pressure for his team. And, you know, it's causing Rek'Sai and Sion to kind of 2v1 him. Whereas then Zed, Thresh, and Nocturne can have a field day with the, with the rest of the laners on the map. Um... Yeah, unfortunately, that's just a little bit of the problem with, you know, not ganking top early on. You needed to get that sign going. You needed to put him in a position where he really could take over that game. And, you know, his itemization also leaves a little bit to be questioned. Uh, no real MR there. You know, going for that, that Sunfire Cape doesn't really make a lot of sense at this point. Oh boy, x is doing a lot of trading. God, that exhaust is just so strong against the So Once again, we've got the gank going up on the top lane. But again, at this point, it doesn't really matter. He's already, Karthus is already strong. These kills aren't doing much for you. Print 24, trying to make something happen here. Karthus all was not used. Definitely a mistake. Print 24 might go for the dive. Does have his ultimate, but it's going to back out. Uh-oh, Tetris. Oh, oh, big Tetris underneath baby. the tower. Captain Capslock trying to fight. What are you doing? Gets the shield. Dirty Lungs, can you make it happen? Doesn't look like a Print 24 is gonna back out here. Oh man, Print 24 could go back in if it's ultimate if he so chose to. Do you want to take a look at that replay? I think I that was love to take really that fancy. Replay. Let's take a look at that Annie flash in. That was completely amazing. Let's take a look at that. Let's play that through. We got in the top lane. Um, Annie comes down, missed hook by Thresh. And if we slow that down, look at that beautiful stun from Annie. That's the kind of picks that they need when red team gets a little bit too aggressive. Let's also take a look at the solo kill. Banshee veils the knockup. 
And he gets the kill onto Scion. I think he, had, he needs one more auto attack to kind of get that. He could have got the kill onto Rek'Sai, like you said before, but he met, he decides to get out of there. Yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit of mistakes, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. If they had used the Karth's ultimate as well, could have been an easy double kill, but that's the stuff that comes with time. Yeah. Not a big deal. All the same, they have been playing quite well. And like you said, once those mistakes are made, it does kind of give the opportunity for the red team to make some sort of comeback here because if their Kalista gets a little bit bigger, you know, gets her items, she could, if, if she's safe, if she's kept, you know, defended by a really good Jan ult and a really good Annie ult, she could really carry these fights. Again, Venom Paw getting ganked. Gonna get picked up by the Annie, it looks like. Oh, Silent takes the kill instead. He almost gets the any. Wow, he's packing a lot of heat all yeah, of a sudden. He yeah, he has a lot of damage. Melise could be in trouble from <laughs> Geese's damage. Whoa, good flash from Geese. Getting out of the knockup from the Callista. But here comes Nocturne. Boom, permanent love is unstoppable. Gonna take down Central Palace as well. What an ultimate. Just when you thought that blue team was kind of crawling their way back, red team is like, you know what? Let's polish up our act. I think we need to turn on the Bunsen yeah, burner here. That so pick they, was yeah, perfect. Considering sure. that, you know, they had given the blue team a little bit of confidence. They thought they can make their own picks. Unfortunately, they don't have a pick comp. They've got a team fight comp. And I think this might be a tower going down. That's a little bit unfortunate for blue team. Uh, Callista's down for another two seconds. Here comes the Karth Assault. Turn and Love taking a little bit low. They might turn this <gasps> back on the Rek'Sai. side. Ooh, knockup missed. Yeah. And like you said, that's a free inhib. I don't. I think that's that's relatively free. I don't think Blue Team is going to be able to catch up to them. But yeah. looks like here comes the Scion Alt. Well, actually no, they just they're this just going be really <laughs> bad. They walked into the AOE Temptress, looking for the hook. All the same, I think these guys are going to be able to rotate towards a dragon as well. So like you said, an unanswered inhibitor. They could be able to find another pick here if they play it right. Permanent Love trying to life steal off the race here. Has his Blade of the Rune Gang active as well still. Ultimate coming up very, oh! very shortly. Permanent Love probably going to look for a pick here. If this team decides to, you can tell he, he wants it. He's trying to lifesteal up. He's got the Bork. That's like the Zed mentality. It's like when yeah. the Q lands, except yeah. when the R lands. And, uh, you know, take a look at that top lane. Venompaw, right back at it. 174 CS. He, he doesn't need to. Like, he doesn't need to really be there. He's doing exactly the right thing. Because Red Team is able to pressure so well with their solo kill picks. And that's what they did. They got a free inhib off that while yeah. Venom Paul was just split pushing. All he needs to do is press R. I that's that's how you play Karthus. You, though. Why would he go for the Rylize if he's not ever going to group? That's true. You're absolutely right. Maybe he should have went for Zanyas if he was going to get 2v1. Uh, even a Rod of Ages, you know? Yeah, that's just true. continue scaling because all he's doing is farming and scaling. Look at that damage. Oh. Doesn't even need his ultimate. Will he be able to get out here? Nope. Wasn't able to get his heal off. With a Rylize, I think he might have been able to, but all the same, that is one kill and a hell of a lot of pressure for the rest of his team on the map. Here comes Nocturne and Thresh. They're swinging around. Gonna look for a dive, most likely. Like I said, Permanent Love does indeed have his ultimate. Just gonna try and get some vision control. And, uh... Permanent Love, here we go. Messes oh. up the W. <laughs> Procs his Yumus, but a little bit of flub there. Not the end of the world. I think you're absolutely right. Oh, Print 24 does a lot of damage. Look at the items he has. Just beasting on those guys. That new Black Beaver doing a ton of damage. Permanent Love looking for an opening. I think this might be an opening for Blue Team. Either. I don't think they want to give up this blue buff. None of the red, none of the rest of Red Team is around the court. None of them are in the area, so I don't think they can contest this very well. So this blue buff is going to go over to Annie. You know, I still don't understand the spell he's played though. You know, it had been mentioned to us by a. Uh, Ghost Junk, the the previous caster, how it gives great mana regen, you know, it's decent harass, you get a little bit of gold from it, like if you fall behind. But, you know, at the end of the day, you could substitute that with a Crystalline Flask, you could get the tier early, you could get the Catalyst, whatever you want to kind of do a better job. The Spell Thief is just like a waste of money, I think, at this point. Because yeah. the Crystalline Flask, you always return with, like, you know... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's I don't know. I went a little bit too ham on Venom Paw, I'm sorry. I went a little bit too far uh i was really i was really I, was, I don't know i've never seen anything like that and i know that um at the end of the day itemization isn't everything a lot has to do with how you're playing and he's done a pretty yeah, good job yeah, this he's, game yeah, for and sure. uh his team has done a good job too playing around the fact that he's kind of just yoloing in the top lane 
Yeah. Do you think they built this comp around him? Or, like, in some regard, uh, they knew that he was going to do that? I think so. I think yeah. after enough games, they kind of realize that they can just kind of, like, send him up there. And actually, it's technically not a YOLO because it is Karthus, but... <laughs> It would have been a YOLO if it was like... What is going on here? We've got the Karthus damage. Doesn't actually have his E on for some reason. Turn your E on, Karthus. There you go. Now they can burst this Baron quite hard. They're going to be able to get it. No problem at all. Look, they've got three people in the bottom lane. Graves doing a fantastic job still pushing down there. Permalove going to give it a little love tap. Print 24 obviously not tanky enough, but with all the lifesteal and uh, incredible damage this team has, it's an easy 25-minute Baron. A little bit too late. Not enough vision control really at four blue team they're just only warding the safety of their own jungle and i yeah. think that's what that's what that's hard when you're warding well, the safety of your own jungle that's like you're on the back foot all the time and you can't create picks for yourself yeah. you need to ward the river at least at least at most it's it's kind of what happens against the pickup once you start to fall behind and you start to lose vision control that is why like a team fight comp doesn't necessarily work against the pick comp once you fall behind you can't give up that much because you, you just lose everything immediately and you can't face check anything. Permanent Love gonna be fine here. Going in for the dive on 3A God blinks back out. QSS used, but here comes Karthus Ultimate. Probably not gonna be enough. Very, very wow. close though. Nocturne on the other side of the map. Unfortunately, stunts up. Used on a minion. <laughs> Karthus gonna come help siege this tower. Gets the wall down. In 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 terms of a uh, pick comp versus a team fight comp, when you get behind as a team comp it's so important to itemize. For example, Eddie decided to go with... Oh, oh gonna have to pause go. there. He's getting chunked by Print24, but the Blade of the Rune King will help him out. Hook does not land. Silence here to back them up. Is this their chance? Big ultimates are down. Annie, do you have your stun? Not yet. <laughs> Looking for it. Trying to charge it up. Graves is slowed by the Janna. Dirty Lungs on the other side of the map. Trying to save as an inhibitor. Not going to work out. Permanent Love going to shred him down. Free God. The Egg God actually just, uh, you know, getting kited out. That's two inhibitors down for the red team. This game is going to be coming to a close. Barrened up minions, barrened up allies. They're doing a lot of work. Rek'Sai is down. This is going to be their kind of last attempt. Here we go. Sign yeah. alt coming in. Karthus alt slowing them down. Doesn't have a lot of ultimates still, but Graves just in the front line. Not afraid of Annie at all. Hook lands on Eclista. Big plays. Print 24 coming in. Exhaust gonna lock her down as well. Shield doing a great job at splitting them and slowing them down. Captain Caps Lock has a whole bunch of armor, but not much else. And this is gonna be uh, the game going over to Print 24. And I mean, the rest of his full court press. Dirty Long is trying to do what he can here, but. I think it's all. It's pretty tanky. He's got the Janus Shield here. These guys Ooh, did good not guy. die. They got free health coming back, trying to chase down X Tempers. He'll go down. That should be a two inhibitors at the end of the day. Sacrifice. He did sacrifice <laughs> himself. Rest in peace, Tempest. Rest in peace. Oh. Look at all those minions, though. Geese should fight if he can dodge the knockup. Use the minions. Use the Baron minions. They do so much damage. Doesn't have the mana to dash. Just a little bit too late, unfortunately. I was mentioning earlier that when you fall behind as a team comp, as a team fight comp, rather, um, it's important to itemize. And I said, for example, Annie went Rod of Ages. If she had the Zhonyas, imagine how many fights would have been turned on their head. It would have been a little bit more helpful and they would have had a chance to kind of make something happen. And when you're behind, itemization is the most important thing. You can't be like, oh, but let me just build this first. No, you can't do that. You gotta put everything on hold and start building your next item. You, you have to do that because it's important to your survivability. Annie has been blown up every single fight and they're abusing the fact that she doesn't have Zhonyas. You know, um, Righteous Glory on Silent. Did you really need that right away? Were you chasing very often? Not really. Itemization when you're behind is super important, especially in a solo queue tournament. Definitely a lot of mistakes made from this blue team here. Such as this, Captain Capslock. <laughs> oh, he's lucky to get out of there alive. Very, very lucky. Here comes Print24. This could actually be really bad for the red team. They're forcing a really hard, great Annie. Uh, ultimate gonna take down Venompaw. He does have his ultimate though, and my lore is actually gonna do a lot of damage. The Egg God gonna go down here. Zed going into the back line has his ultimate, but can't find a target. Only two characters going down for the one. Once again though, that is a lot of ultimates down. The only thing left up is Graves. Can Melee's carry this fight? Here comes the Zed. Cleanse going off. Is it gonna be up? Won't remove the Zed ultimate. Just gives her a little bit oh! extra health. Central Palace sacrificing himself once again. But a little bit too little too late. I was getting hyped there. I thought it was coming back, but Permanent Love and X-Tempress are going to be able to take down that Nexus Tower. 
that's going to be the game going over to the red team and uh, a really impressive showing from them. Yeah, man, we're downtown. Melly's team is going to some, have to have some pasta a la GG after that one. That was definitely <laughs> a game that she, she, I know that she really, really wanted to win that. And it was just really rough. Zed was out of control. Karthus yeah. was making the right moves in the right places. It was yeah, what a game. It's just, uh, you know, once again, it's so hard to come from solo queue and come into a team game like this where teams are coordinated enough that you can't just like gank any lane. Yeah, you got to have a game plan and you got to be able to adapt on the fly. And uh, you know that would come with a lot of these teams. You know they're all really good players. These guys all have played. They understand the game. But coming up with a game plan in three minutes at the end of pick and ban phase and knowing what your comp should do, where you should capitalize, and the weaknesses of the opponent comp. Those are, that's why you need a good leader. That's the thing that we all of these teams yeah. have, you know what I mean? This is Red Mercy, this is uh, a, a lot of these players, Permanent Love, Jayden. exactly. Like, this is, you just kind of got to get a run with the flow. Five and seven Karthus, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. You got a couple Let's kills on your damage. side. Let's take a look at the damage. Let's see how much damage he did. I'm really Let's curious to see. The damage. I'm sure he did quite a bit. Oh my god. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, Karthus doubling everyone's damage in that game. Just sitting top, soaking damage, using his ultimate. Even without the teleport, uh, you know, that's just what happens. Welcome to Solo Q Legends. Welcome to Solo Q Legends, <laughs> boys. That's it's a squishy be... comp like that, too. It's just very, very effective. Yeah, and you know, Janet just made it a little bit, like, a little bit worse, because she mm -hmm. was incredibly squishy. Uh, gave Nocturne the opportunity to really pressure that ball lane, and so was the same as Zed. Anyways, guys, we're going to take a little bit of a break and hop into the next game. We will catch you guys in a few minutes.